Welcome to Let's Talk Meshing's Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature in just a couple of minutes. Sometimes when meshing, you may have a situation where you have two objects that happen to be in close proximity and the fronts are maybe about to collide, or you have a case where you've introduced anisotropy on the surface mesh in an effort to reduce the cell count. In this video today, we're going to introduce three advanced T-Rex attributes that may help you in these situations. Here's the T-Rex panel, and you can see the advanced frame highlighted there. There are three advanced attributes that you can control, isotropic seed layers, collision buffer, and anisoiso blend. The first one, isotropic seed layers, allows you to specify the number of layers of points that are created in the iso portion of the volume mesh to improve resolution where the fronts happen to have stopped early. The number of seed layers is gonna be zero or greater. Here you can see with the default value of zero that there's a lot of space being left between those two fronts and the isotropic tets are rather coarse in that region. When we increase that value to one, you can see that points have been seeded in the iso portion of the mesh and the resolution improved. Here are those two grids side by side and you can clearly see that the addition of those points has improved the resolution in the iso portion of that volume mesh. The second attribute we're going to talk about is the collision buffer. The collision buffer specifies the minimum buffer to be maintained between encroaching fronts and it's a factor of the current cell height. Larger values are going to result in more space being left for isotropic tetrahedra to be developed. And the values for collision buffer are going to be positive floating point values. Here is the default collision buffer of 0.5. You can see not much space is being left between those two fronts at the bottom of that image. As we increase this value to two, you can see that more space is being left, and a value of five, even more space is being left for the isotropic tetrahedra to be developed in that vicinity. The last attribute is the anisoiso blend attribute, and it allows you to specify the rate with which anisotropic elements on the surface are blended into isotropic elements on the interior of the volume mesh. The smaller values are going to preserve the anisotropy of the front, while larger values decrease the distance over which that decimation and transition occur. And here's an example of where you've introduced anisotropy on the surface mesh to better resolve curvature and reduce the cell count. So with aniso iso blend set to the minimum value of zero, you can see that those points are advanced off of the surface. No transition is occurring. We're preserving that anisotropy. With a default value of 0.5, you can see that some transitions are beginning to occur. Some decimation is occurring to improve the transition to isotropy. And at the maximum value of one, you can see that a lot of transition is occurring to help move those elements from anisotropy on the surface to isotropy in the far field. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop us a line down below or connect with us on Twitter, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.